Okay, welcome everyone. Let's get right into the charts. Uh, market's been trading for a couple hours now, so we'll take a look and see what we got going on. Uh, not a whole lot to cover in the indices, so we'll kind of breeze through this one. I do want to point out these gold miners. I think there's something in interesting there for everyone to take a look at. Uh, and we'll uh, let's get right into it. So triple triple Qs, no 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 real sell signal. I'm really waiting for an impulsive breakdown of this 333.93 or 334. Basically, an impulsive sell signal or break of that, and I think that sets us up for uh, you know some more downside. But we don't have any, you know, you can see we basically have held this. We've been chopping sideways really since about August, uh, August 7th. So almost all month. If you look at the daily chart here, you can see just this big sideways range. A uh, little bit of sell side activity today, this morning, but the buyers stepped in and have since recovered it. So we'll see what happens, how the day closes. Um, looking at the SPY, same thing. You see the SPY here. I'm really waiting for a break of this level right here for 11, an impulsive breakdown of that. And, you know, we, we are trading this trend line right here. We broke it. We've been back testing it several times, back tested it once, twice. And, you know, today was basically a third back test on the open and they sold it down. But again, there's no sell signals. Uh, you know, it just continues to kind of back test. So we need to let this break that 311 area to see the next sell signal. All right, so really nothing going on there. IWM, small caps, the main thing on small caps, we've got this trend line coming off the March 2020 lows. And this is your, you know, your uh, upward trend line waiting for a break of that trend line, some sort of an impulsive break. So this can obviously continue to kind of grind higher and just move higher until you get a break of the trend. Uh, trend is up. But we do have negative divergence on this one. So, you know, I think we're probably likely going to run up and, hit it, make a new high, uh, you know, around 241 or so, maybe make, you know, put in a new high, that'll be a divergent high, then, then sell off from that high. But right here where we're at, you know, I'm not really interested in uh, taking a position on this one. So just waiting for a better setup. A divergent high would have a high likelihood of failure. If we get a divergent high and then it sells off and breaks this trend line, that, that's going to be the best setup for shorting this thing. So I might wait for that. Um, all right, so moving on, let's just look at oil real quick. As far as I can tell, this inflation trade that's going on is still not over. Uh, there, there's still, you know, people are buying the dips in any kind of inflation proxy. So anything that's priced in dollars, commodities, oil, uh, gold, uh, the grains, the ag commodities, copper, all that um, has been really in play. And I, and I don't see any signs that that's finished. So oil, we hit support right there at 46.97. I was actually looking for a move. Ideally, I was looking for a move down here to 42. That was the area that I was hoping to buy oil down at. Uh, so far, we're bouncing off the first level of support, which is you know this 47 area. So you can see bouncing right there. Today, you know, just continuing higher basically. Uh, and I don't see any signs uh, of a sell signal, so likely oil is just going to go higher. Looking at these ag commodities, wheat, uh, you look at the hourly here, and we have this trend line that we've been walking up, and today we're basically just continuing to move higher in an uptrend. So corn, same thing, moving higher. I don't see any sign of a reversal, any indication that we're going to actually trade lower. Um, we don't even have negative divergence. You see here on the PPO, we burn through that right there. And if you look at the RSI, uh, RSI does have slight negative divergence right there. You can see we did make a, a equal or slightly lower a high than the former one. And then the P, and then obviously on a much higher price. So the, you do have some negative divergence there, mixed uh, indicators. You know, I could see a pullback in these ag commodities, uh, you know, pull back to maybe 1750 or so. Uh, there, there might be a better entry point to go along these things. So um, coffee, you can see here pulling back today right to support 4070. So this is Joe, the coffee ETF. And you can see here, this was resistance. We broke out with three days of, you know, buying today, pulling back, but not breaking down below support. So this is an objective area to actually uh, add to a position or go long. 
um, for a move to the next resistance level, which I really think is all the way up here at 4560. Lumber futures, I'm watching these for a short, but they just continue to just move higher and higher. So again, I, you know, here's sugar, you know, sold it this morning, but the buyer stepped right in. You can see that big long tail. So it was selling down, the buyers just stepped right in and bought it up. So that's what I'm seeing. So now flipping over to gold, let's look, cause this is another commodity. Here's gold bullion. Uh, you can also use GLD to really track this, but here's uh, gold bullion. You can see today, let me go to the hourly. This morning, they sold it down right to support. So you can see there's your former, that was your former resistance right there at 1755. And it was, uh, we held resistance here. Finally, when we broke out, uh, we kind of went up to the next level of resistance, which is 1790. And then we've today pulled right back down and tested that support again. So we're, right now we're just in the middle of this range, 1790 top of the range, 1755 uh, bottom of the range. A break one way or the other would be, you know, is how you want to trade this, I think. You know, so you break to the upside, that's bullish. Break to the downside, that's bearish. Uh, as of right now, we're right in the middle. Nothing's technically changed. And if you roll back and look, you know, clearly in an uptrend, we, um, on the hourly, look at the daily Starting an uptrend here, obviously we have the larger downtrend on the daily, but we've we've got bullish divergence that we started to put in down here. So I think it's likely we're gonna break to the upside uh, and I'm positioning accordingly. Now let's move over and look at some of the miners. One thing I wanna point out is GDX. Look at GDX. So here's a downtrend. Here's the downtrend in the miners. And basically we broke out and we're coming in for a back test today. Nothing technically is damaged. This is actually an area of support. This is the area where you'd want to potentially be buying or adding to a position, in my opinion. Uh, and so again, that's uh, support. I think we bounce off this level, this price right here. Looking at these other miners, like here's like Nico Eagle. This one's got to probably pull down. I think I'm you know down to support right around 62.30. So a little bit more downside in this one. Uh, and we're coming into some major support. So I think we're likely gonna hold there. Uh, what else looks interesting? Uh, Royal Gold, you can see here's my trend line. I've had this trend line marked out for a while, 113, and pulling right down to that, holding that as of today. So holding support there. Uh, let's see here, nothing really there on GDXJ. Just trying to point, here's the wheat and precious metals, you can see, still holding that trend line, that trend line support. So here's your downtrend in WPM. We broke out. Now it wasn't a super impulsive breakout, so we could fail. You know, this could be a false breakout. So that's something you want to look for. If we break down from here and actually start, you know, selling off and break this trend line, then this would be a false breakout or a bull trap. So you want to watch for that. And if that happens, we're likely going to head down and make a new, you know, probably a new lower, uh, lower low below this previous low right here and a new divergent low. So that is possible. We'll, we'll want to watch that. Uh, HMY, then this one still break, you know, has still broken out. So you can see there's the breakout back test, you know, and again, you know, still well above support. So I think we're still looking good on this one. I, I do believe we're trending upward. I mean, and you can see a trend too. If you mark it out, you can see clear uptrend right there. So we're at support on this one as well. <coughs> and I do think that holds. Uh, I am gold, you can see here, downtrend line right there on IAG. Breakout, coming back in for a back test at support. So that's the story of a lot of these, they're at support. BTG, here's support right there at 488. We're uh, pulling back in right at, su right at support. And that support goes all the way back. You can see there's your support from back here. There it was support here, we broke, it was resistance, and now we've broken out and we're coming in tagging it at support. Uh, Newmont did break down. So this one has broken, uh, it had earnings today, I believe. And it was, or yeah, the earnings were today and they were negative earnings. So Newmont, which is the largest gold miner, has, as of right now, as far as I can tell, had a false breakdown. Um, so whether that's you know forecasting what the rest of the miner is gonna do, or if this is just Newmont specific, uh, that remains to be seen. 
uh, down 5% today. But the rest of these miners are not breaking down. Of course, they a lot of them have earnings coming out here in the next couple of days. So that's going to be our tell whether, you know, whether gold rallies higher or, you know, and these miners rally. If they can make it through earnings without breaking these support levels and they rally off those support levels, then, uh, you know, likely we're going to be in for another leg higher. Interesting enough, Apple reported really good earnings, you know, blowout quarter earnings, and yet they just came in and sold it down. So, again, you look at the hourly chart here, and you can see that there's your earnings and just sold it down. That's been, I've noticed that in Apple the last couple quarters. I think that's pretty common for Apple to trade up into earnings and then sell off after earnings. It's because Apple knows how to, Apple has figured out how to, hit the earnings mark. And so what they do is they buy back shares, they buy back enough shares, they know how to, you know, they know how to, uh, they know how to create an announcement that's gonna be earnings or, you know, and they're profitable. And so, you know, they, they almost always beat earnings and that, does, but yet the market still sold it off. Again, still nothing's technically broken yet. We're still just kind of, this is just one day of selling off earnings and we haven't broken support. So I don't see anything beyond that. Uh, we need to see a few more signs beyond that, but just something to note. Uh, and then Microsoft, you can see they've been selling off since earnings too. So here's Microsoft earnings. They sold off into earnings and more selling today. So Microsoft's breaking down. Next level of support on Microsoft, sh the buyer should be here at 245.25 or 245.30 uh, or so. Um, and we'll watch that level. You know, if the buyers aren't there when we break down, well, something bigger might be happening. But until then, you know, we're uh, we're just pulling down into support. Again, I'm watching those cues for the breakdown, you know, and likely that's, you know, Microsoft, the cues won't break down unless Apple and Microsoft break down as well. So that's kind of uh, what I've been watching. Uh, something to watch for here, and this is just, we'll end with this one, but this is Deere, John Deere, I believe they make farming equipment. And you can see that basically, this is part of the commodity trade as well. They make the equipment for the agricultural industry. Uh, clear uptrend, nice and clean, crisp uptrend line right there on the daily chart. We do have negative divergence. There it is right there on the PPO and the RSI on the daily. Uh, and so, you know, we waiting for a breakdown now there's no breakdown yet so there's no reason to short this thing if you're long i would just stay long until you get that breakdown earnings come out uh next month uh so a couple weeks before earnings so nothing to do here it's just something to watch and i'll, I'll probably keep an eye on this one to see if we get some sort of a sell signal i'm not long this stock uh you know but you know, it is setting up for a breakdown in the sell signal. So we just have to wait for it. Could take weeks, months, you know, we don't know. But uh, days. So I'll just point that out. And it, when I see it break, then I'll let you guys know. All right. That's all I got for today. I don't see anything else really that interesting. Leave a comment below if you guys want me to look at a specific stock. I'm looking for some new ideas, new trade setups. If you guys have one, leave a comment below. I'll take a look. I've, I've, you know, I think a subscriber pointed out this one, and it's definitely a setup, a short setup. It's just not actionable yet. Um, so I like it though. So other than that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.